see the title of this video and I bet y'all y'all want to see what my hair looks like on this bonnet don't ya I got you ah! all right all right you're really forcing it. it is not that bad no god all right now it is not that bad like at least give me a chance you know what I guess I'm gonna have to call her back. I guess I'm gonna have to call her back. I guess we're gonna have to go here, London, Paris, and Montego Bay. What's goody in the mother hoodie? This is Chrissy H, and I'm back with another story time. I know a lot of you guys are probably like, why well, she look like my Auntie Cheryl? But really, your Auntie Cheryl look like me. By the way, thank you guys so much for getting me over 500 subscribers. We are lit up in this so for my new subscribers, I bet you guys are probably wondering why the f*** she have a bonnet on. If you guys watched my first story time video, I actually wear a bonnet because I feel like story time is not like a bedtime story. Like, like let's get comfortable. Let's let's get dirty. Let's get a little crazy. Like, grab your side chicks. Grab your bonnets. Grab your do rags. Grab your PJ. Grab your little cup of teas. And let's get comfortable. So this is a story time about how I became a bald ass. This story takes place on April 13, 2017, and you know I know the date because I'm salty as f For you guys who's going to prom this year, next year, whenever, it is not that serious. This is just some bullshit America's just trying to capitalize off of. And I knew that, but I still just wanted to look good and ended up looking bald, but you know, it's okay. So, I had a vision, okay? I had a vision to look like Beyonce. That's because all of my friends that know me tell me that I remind them of Beyonce. So you can all- ah! oh, 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 like Beyonce! Are you out of your fucking mind? Beyonce, sweetie, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that an ugly ass bitch like this would even okay. say that. Oh my God, are you fucking insane, Beyonce? I had a vision of what I wanted to look like for prom and I know you guys understand that because when it's like your birthday or prom or a wedding or an event you picture what you want to look like for that and when you can't get it it makes you go harder I had a stylist who specialized in fall locks so that's what I wanted for my prom look and it made sense at the time because my birthday's on May 14 and prom was on April 13 so I would have had those faux locks going into my birthday when they would have looked more realistic. So when I went to the stylist who specialized in faux locks and we made our first appointment together everything was fine. I woke up at like 6 o'clock in the morning the appointment and then she ended up texting me about like 30 minutes later saying Oh, I'm sorry, I had to host an event for church and blah, 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 like, now praise the Lord, but that was just a profession. But you know what? You can't, you know how it feels, man. You want to curse somebody out, but you can't. Like, these hairstylists literally have your whole insecurities in their hands. They determine whether you go out tonight. They determine whether you take that picture on Instagram. They determine whether you get hey, they got, they have so much control, so I didn't curse her out. Like, I couldn't really say anything. So I was like, okay, cool. We set up an appointment for another time. It went to the point where I went all the way to her house, to her front door. She hasn't answered me the whole time. Like, I was getting ready. I walk out looking like a cockroach with some sunglasses. Like, you guys know when you're on your way to a hair appointment and you're trying to just hide from the public because, you know, you have your hair out looking crazy. And I had on a sweatshirt and some glasses. And I look like I just... I just looked like I was on America's Most Ratchet. I traveled all the way to her house with like my bag full of packs of hair. I was like texting her like, okay, I'm on my way, but she never responded. But I'm just like, okay, we set up an appointment for a time and a place. You know I'm coming, you know we made this appointment, so I didn't give up. Once I get to her steps, I kind of hesitated. I was like, okay, is it kind of weird for me to just pop up at the house and she still didn't respond to any of my texts and I called my best friend and she was like, yeah, that's kind of weird. So I took an Uber and I did. I don't think she ever really responded after that at all. So I just wanted to find someone else because clearly that stylist was a professional and unreliable. Honestly, 
I just could have been avoided if I just wore my natural hair. Like, my natural hair was A-OK. -okay. Like, I, there wasn't really a problem with it, you know? Like, I didn't have a problem with my natural hair. And if you're watching this and you got natural hair, I ain't got a problem with natural hair. And I appreciate you watching me talk about how I lost my natural hair. But I didn't got a problem with my natural hair. It's just that I went to my hair every day. I wore buns. I wore puffs. I wore my hair out. So, doing it for prom wouldn't have felt special to me. That's why I wanted to get a new style so i tried to find another stylist asap like i had a vision i was obsessed with that vision i had to get this look this is what i was dead set on so i'm trying to make this happen there was a stylist who my sister who did my sister's hair once and she did crochet braids now crochet is the easiest protective style to do like i honestly i, I wouldn't go off of that on a stylist to do like like singles or twists so i went on her profile and she did have some singles but she did not have any follow-ups on her page. But her bio did say she could do any type of style. Now, I thought, okay, I don't see no follow-ups, which was the first red flag. But, like, I feel like if you could do singles and if you could do twists, you could do follow-ups. So I hit up this stylist. I'm going to call her Catfish. You shouldn't have never called me a fat-ass Kelly Price. I'm calling her that because when she came up to the salon, I was a little scared. Like She didn't look like what she looked like on social media. She made it seem like she knew what she was doing, and she really didn't. I hit up Catfish. Hey, can you do my phone locks for prom? And she said, yeah, sure, whatever. And I was like, OK, so can I see any pictures? Like, show me the receipts. Are you experienced, you know? So I, be, I, I caught myself. I wasn't going to just trust her if I didn't see any photo logs on her page. But I was dumb because she ended up sending me an Android picture close up of like two photo logs that she did on herself. I was just like, okay, you know what? She did it before and I'm desperate as hell. So I'm just going to take what I can get. The bitch tried it. She tried it. She tried it. 200 something dollars. Now, photo logs, like that's not a surprise. Photo logs typically cost two, three hundred dollars because it takes eight plus hours to do. The least amount of time it will take will probably be six hours. But for the most part, it takes a long ass time. So I was like, Oh hell no! Oh hell no! Oh hell no! Oh hell no! Hell no! I ain't paying you two hundred seven dollars. Plus, you have to buy like multiple packs of hair, and because it's the type of hair that you get for full locks, they will cost five dollars a pack. So I was like, no, bitch, fuck that. <laughs> Gotta go. But then she was like, all right, this is for your prom. I lower it to like one something, one hundred and seven dollars, and I took that. But honestly, here's the second flag. Now, if whoever, this is a life lesson. All right, for y'all little. If you're trying to buy something and that seller is so quick to lower that price, do not buy it. That is a scam. If you try to sell me a car for five thousand dollars and I'm like, no, I want to pay one thousand, and you're like, sold, and then I end up stranded in a desert on my way to my appointment, like you can't be surprised. So that was kind of another red flag. Even though I know she was trying to be nice, but I mean, I ended up bought. She lowered it to one hundred seven dollars. And I bought 11 packs of hair. Keep that in mind. I bought 11 packs of hair. And I was like, all right, cool. So April 13 comes. Everybody in their mama comes to school in a bonnet. Literally. I was like, what in the f***? We had seven periods in my high school that I went to. Everyone left after like second or third period. So I was like, all right, cool. I left after like third period. I went straight to the salon. And that was that. She was like 15 minutes late. Because of traffic, I didn't really care. Because I wasn't going nowhere. I was clearly desperate. Now, I was kind of living the luxurious life and whatever. Because I was watching TV. I was watching Mari. You know, you're not the fun. I was on my phone. There was a fan. She had her own little room in the salon. And I was chilling. Like, I was cool. And the full locks went down to my ass. It took like eight hours. A little bit over eight hours. I made it just... <laughs> took a little bit over eight hours and it was cool it was fine now mind you i have full locks one time before this and it's not weird that full, when you get full locks they hurt why do they hurt because when you wrap the hair you start at the root and you have to make sure it's tight so that the full locks are secure and that the hair that's wrapped around the braid doesn't fall off so okay the fact that the full locks hurt it's not weird like you are expecting that for the first couple of days that you have it so when she was done, you know, I, I look like I look like this because I, I just, I, they were tight ass But, you know, that's nothing out of the ordinary. I took my Uber home, I got ready, 
I look, I look like Beyonce, but I look better than Beyonce. I had on a red slit dress. I had on gold heels and I put gold beads in my faux locks. I look like a Wakandian princess. And of course, I am going to insert pictures and I was lit. Like, I got a straight, straight Caribbean appearance. So I never went to a party before and I still don't sometimes. But this was kind of like my first party, so I was lit. And believe it or not, I was 100% sober in that video. I was having so much fun that night that I did not, like, like, my head didn't feel like it was hurting, you know? Like, I guess I was just not paying attention to the pain. Meanwhile, my hair the whole time was like, Help me. Help me. Nigga. Help me. And I hear you screaming. That night and, like, two days after, I was in so much pain. Like I said, phone locks, you're supposed to have a little pain, you know? And then it loosens up. But this was just like pain on steroids. This was extra. This was not okay. The first time I had phone locks, it did hurt, but I was still able to lay my head down and go to sleep. This time, I could not even lay my head down. That's how much pain I was in. I was literally crying. So I hit up Catfish and I'm like, yo, so what's that? Like, like, why, why am I in pain right now? It's not, this is extra. And she was like, oh, just put some cold water on your scalp and don't tie your hair at night. It sense, because you know when you put cold water on something that hurts, it cools down and it feels good. So it's like, I put the cold water on my head or whatever, and when I took my head out, like, a couple of seconds later, the pain would just come back. Now, I get why she told me not to tie my hair at night, because, you know, when I'm tying my hair, it's pulling it back. And it's making it worse. Like, I understood that part. So I was like, alright, cool. That made sense. The pain did not totally go away. But it, it was it was going down. I was like, okay, cool. But when the pain came, that's when my hair was itchy as <laughs> Like, imagine scratching an open wound. That's how bad it was. I was on the floor crying. I was on the floor looking like a maniac. Like a sick crackhead. Oh, no. God damn Woo! Shit! Goddamn nuts! Just on the floor scratching my skull. And clearly my hair wasn't protected because the Fire Nation attacked and I had STDs and I was scratching. I was just, I was just going crazy. In my mom's room and my mom, I'm just like, my mom's like, what's wrong? I'm like, yo. <laughs> my hair! This is my hair! And I was, she was just like, take him out. I was like, no, I spent like, with the amount of money I paid her and the amount of money I spent on buying 11 packs of hair, the whole total cost came out to like two something hundred dollars. And I was like, I'm not trying to waste that. I'm not going to waste that money. But my mom was like, listen, if you're going through all of this pain and suffering, you already wasted your money, child. And I was like, shit, you don't have to tell me twice. I was like, you know what, that is a good point. If you pay a lot of money to get your hair done and you're you're feeling pain or you're not liking it or whatever, do not get your money's worth, boo. Take that hair out. You already wasted your money on paying for something that either doesn't look good or is making you cry at night. Like, just take the shit. I took the scissors and I was cutting away. I didn't care if I was cutting my real hair. I did not care. I just needed to take the shit. Out. So I took it out and I didn't notice that my hair was fucked up because you know when you take out like your hair from braids or twists it's kind of thick it's kind of big and especially when you're combing it out you don't really notice it it was when I got into the shower that I noticed it and I was trying to I was grabbing my hair like you know I'm washing my hair and I'm like yo this does not feel right I'm missing pieces of hair like you know where the hair is supposed to be yeah it wasn't there when I was washing it it did not feel right at all I gave it time, I deep conditioned my hair, twisted it up, put on a shower cap, came home, rinsed it out, I was like, no, it still does not feel right. I took a video to see it, especially because it was twisted up so I could see more clearly. I see bald spots. 
I see bald spots. The places where I couldn't feel my hair is where the bald spots were. I was bald. My hair was thin. My hair was breaking off. My hair was just... It just wasn't there no more. Head with the stylist. I'm like, I'm bald. Oh no, I'm so sorry. You know, put some oil on your hair. I didn't want a refund. Give me my hair back. I was trying to figure out. She was like, this never happened to me before. That's what all stylists say. It doesn't matter if it never happened to you before. It's happening now, so fix it. Give me my hair back. I watched this famous YouTuber who had the same experiences that I did, who said that her hair was really itchy. and found out that she was allergic to the hair. So I was like, okay, maybe I'm allergic to the hair. It was Kanekalon hair, and sometimes people do soak Kanekalon hair in like, I think it's vinegar or something to get the chemicals off of the hair so people won't have an allergic rea reaction to it. So I'm like, okay, maybe I got an allergic reaction to it. So I just cut my hair eventually. I tried to deep condition, I tried to grow it out, I tried to, you know, be a soldier and stick it through, but I was like, this is not working for me. I cut my hair, I had a taper cut, and I did not like the way it was. I cut it off a little bit more. My hair grew back. It grew back pretty fast. But when it grew back, I was doing my puffs and everything. I was doing the styles that I used to do. It just didn't feel or look the same. So literally, when my hair grew out again, the right side of my head was more thin than the left side. So I know that I still had some bald spots and I still had some thinning. And even though I cut my hair and grew it out, it just wasn't working for me. So on January 3rd, 2018 of this year, I went to the barber shop and I cut all my hair off. I wanted a clean slate and I became a bald ass. There were so many people trying to tell me not to cut my hair, you're not gonna look good with short hair, da da da. Do not listen. If you try if you think about cutting your hair, do not listen to those people. Seriously. They did not they were like, I don't see anything wrong with your hair or just grow it out or just give it time. I was like, no, like I know my hair, this is not my hair. This is a whole stranger on my head. This hair is the thickest that it has ever been in my whole two three years of being natural it is the thickest so i am so excited for it to grow out and even though i'm a bald ass bitch i'm a bad ass bitch i'm a bad ass bald bitch i don't regret my decision and my hair doesn't regret my decision it's really flourishing right now better than it was ever before so if you want to cut your hair if you're going to do the same thing i am just do it do it just do it ain't nobody's head but your bald ass head so don't, don't, just, just don't. And that's just pretty much it. My hair is growing right now and I still cry when I look at my old videos. You know, I still cry, but it's okay. <laughs> Anywho, that's pretty much the story time. If you guys want natural hair videos, comment down below. But I do want to see y'all prom pictures, how y'all look at prom. So follow me on my Instagram, asia.chrissy, 2 s 2 Vise. Follow my Instagram for daily updates and should just connect with me. Please hit that subscribe button because when I get to 1,000 subscribers, I will be doing a QA. and a even though I know y'all don't care about my life. You know, let's be on the road to 1,000. And if you laughed, or if you smiled, or if you chuckled, or if you did a little, hmm, then please hit that subscribe button because all I want to do is make our little motherfuckers laugh. Bye, guys. She the girl, she the girl, she the girl.